Good evening, friends. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We do have some breaking news. According to TASS, Russian news, I've already seen uh, the possibility of this being true already in uh, uh, several places there on Twitter. Different people are reporting that uh, there has been a helicopter downed by the uh, Donbass militia uh, and that there are NATO instructors that were on board this helicopter. They say, uh, there's reports that say that uh, the Ukraine government launched a heavy offenses near Donetsk uh, region, uh, but then this report came out according to the DPR sources. The helicopter landed on the outskirts of uh, uh, Krasnogrovka settlement, and that area is now locked down. Uh, so uh, according to, let me just see what we have here. It says here, the militia commanded of the self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic has received information that the helicopter uh, downed by the militia on Thursday was carrying some instructors from NATO's member states. The DPR operations commander spokesman uh, uh, Eduard Busren told journalists on Friday. Uh, so this actually happened yesterday, but it's only being reported today. There were several military instructors from NATO member states on board during the combat flight. The Donetsk news agency quoted <clears throat> Basarin as saying, according to the DPR sources, the helicopter landed on the outskirts of Kronoskorovka settlement sources. Uh, in the command elaborated that the area was locked down and mobile communications was turned off. On Thursday, October the 13th, head of the DPR, Alexandre uh, Zakharokinovko, announced that the Ukrainian military, with the support of a combat helicopter, had attempted to carry out an attack on the DPR militia uh, positions, but the helicopter had been shot down. The previous time the Ukrainian militia used aviation during hostilities was on January 19, 2015, when several Sukhoi uh, uh, Su-25 strike fighters were seen over Donbass. The Minsk Memorandum Date on September 19, 2014, bans the use of combat aviation and unmanned aircraft in the ceasefire zone along the line of contact, excluding the unmanned aircraft in the OSCE special monitoring mission. Uh, so, question remains then, I assume that they shot the, uh, the helicopter down, but it seems like that it must have landed safely, <clears throat> but probably, you know, engine failure, something of that nature there. Uh, no report as far as the NATO instructors that were on board the helicopter. Uh, this is early, what we're getting early on on this report here. Um, at any rate, uh, we'll be keeping you guys up to date more on this. Something else I want to bring to your attention as well that um, a little concerning for me was uh, I got a, a person that commented, and you guys can see this on our video before this one here, made this comment here. So I can clearly go public with it because they made the comment uh, public. But I wanted to bring this to your attention. A guy named Brian says, Stephen, Russia is not going to go, uh, go to war over Syria. Now, it's not so much that that he says. I want to bring to you something that he says here about the New World Order. And uh, I find it very interesting. It says that this, all, this is all propaganda. The New World Order is the Anglo-American Israeli Empire. This is a unipolar world order. Russia and China want a bipolar and Trump polar world order. Putin is trying to establish Russia as a bipolar counterweight to the Anglo hegemony, and the Pentagon will not permit this. The Pentagon will continue to insist in having full spectrum dominance. They will knock down, uh, uh, they will not back down. Expect the U.S. to hit many Syrian government and military targets. They will warn the Russians beforehand, and if Russia Russia, Russians die, well, then that's on them. Understand, the Pentagon will not back down for a second from Putin, and Putin is backing himself into a corner to lose. Russia itself is not threatened here unless they attack Americans in defense of Syria. The Russians are not suicidal, especially over Syria, this man states here. Stephen, you are doing no service to your country or Israel by spreading Russian propaganda. We are the new world order. Either you are with the U.S. and Israel or you are against us. Putin's endorsement of Trump should tell you Putin is afraid of and who he thinks he can manip, intimidate, and control. Wake the hell up, Stephen, from your conspiracy-confused psych, warfare delusions, and choose sides. So I'm supposed to choose the... Uh, 
from what he says here, the New World Order, uh, I'm supposed to choose this one, which is what they call the Anglo-American Israeli Empire, which is supposed to be the head of the New World Order here. Let me just kind of share something with you that you may find interesting in regards to this. Um, I looked up just to see about this Anglo-American Israeli Empire. And there is an article that was written about this. It was posted on August the 2nd, 2016. It states this, It's difficult to trace the movement of the British Isra Israelism direct to the Vatican. However, some clarity can be attained by looking at the organizations involved with the movement. The Jesuit-led Vatican is the common denominator of power in Britain, Israel, and the United States. The Vatican is the head of the New World Order monster, and she has big plans for earthly Jerusalem. To understand how all the intrigue has come to a head in our time, we must take a closer look at the historical record. In order to understand that the Vatican has the upper hand on both Britain and America, we need to examine the American Revolution. The United States is Rome's satellite and has been since the end of the Revolution. So the Anglo-American Israeli Empire is the New World Order. Well, you know, it lets me know then what I have been fighting. And no, it's not just about Russia and it's not just about Syria. But I will tell you this, when it comes to Israel, my people, the Israeli, the Jewish people, do not want any part of a new world order. Now, I can't speak that for all the government as I have been exposing that for years as well. So let me set the record straight. No, I will not choose the new world order. And Israel, the only part in Israel that's for a new world order was people like Shimon Peres and now the Jewish Congress that have signed on with the Vatican to try to bring about a new world order and putting the Pope at the head of this new world order in Israel, in Jerusalem. Might I, might, might I uh, remind you that according to Daniel's prophecy, they would try to marry the vision in Daniel chapter 11, I believe verse 16. But this was the sons of the lawless. Yes, it does show that there are Israeli politicians and rabbis that would be involved in this, but the Bible clearly prophesies that they shall stumble, they shall fail, they will not be successful in doing it. And let me say this, let me tell you why the United States is so, pardon the expression, but hell-bent on conquering Syria. Because Bashar al-Assad, unlike his father, his father did attack Israel in 1967, 1973, and again was with the Lebanon war there in, what is it, 1982, something like that. So yes, Bashar al-Assad's father was not the best guy in the world, especially for Israel. But I will say this, as far as Bashar al-Assad, there's been a lot of accusations made against him when it comes to Israel. But all that aside, in 2010, he was trying to make peace with Prime Minister Netanyahu. Why was this derailed? Well, I guess they decided that in order to fulfill their New World Order plan, we have to get all the Jews into the Promised Land, which I do agree, biblically it does say that our people would return. God knows that. God knows that they would also have an evil plot to try to marry the vision. What vision? They're trying to bring about Daniel chapter 9, verses 24, where they bring reconciliation for iniquity, and they think the Pope of Rome can do it, and you want to build his little, you want to build the Temple Mount, will have the, uh, the third temple, which will actually be built for the Pope of Rome. It's not going to be built for the Jewish people, as many think it would be, but it's going to be for a different purpose altogether. And at the same time, You've made sure that you've infiltrated the Israeli government to cause our neighbors to hate us, and you've incited a lot of violence between certain members of the Israeli government, not all of them, but certain members of the Israeli government, and that of the Palestinians, the people in Gaza, etc., and in Syria, and all of our neighbors around us to absolutely hate us. And the reason why the United States wants to topple Syria is so that they can put an Islamic regime in there, not a man that protects Christians that stands for the Christian people, minded maybe not the Orthodox Catholic, Roman Jesuits that is, 
but he has protected the Eastern Christians. So they want to have a murderous regime in there, which is what the United States Obama uh, government has been backing from the very beginning. He has been backing ISIS first, he created ISIS. Secondly, then they went to what they called the so-called moderate rebels, and then they go on to al-Nursa and every other kind of jihadist that you can possibly think of. And if you don't think that the United States is backing ISIS, then answer me this question here. Why is it that the United States and Turkey also going to be involved in the attack on Mosul, which clearly, by the way, is a biblical prophecy in the book of Nahum, uh, where it says that they will flee out of Nineveh because Nineveh becomes a ruinous heap? says in uh, verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 7, And it shall come to pass that they that look upon thee shall flee from thee and say, Nineveh is laid waste. Who will bemoan her? Uh, hence shall I seek comforters for thee. So yes, you're about to fill that uh, scripture as well. But what did the United States do? They said to the ISIS militants there in Mosul, you can leave even with your weapons and go to Syria if you want to leave or face death. Oh, isn't that nice? You don't back ISIS, say. Eh? Send them to Syria because you need more fighters there to help topple Bashar al-Assad. Well, it sounds like to me the United States is planning their attack on uh, the Syrian government to do what for? In order to bring about a radical regime inside of the Syrian government because ultimately what this new world order wants to do is to turn all the nations around Israel against Israel to hate Israel so that they can do what? Finally annihilate the Jewish people in their own homeland. That's what your plans are. But you will bitterly fail because God will send two witnesses that are here on this earth already, only waiting for that time where God will actually begin to wake them up to realize who they are. Now, let's take a look, though, to see. I'm not the only guy that believes these things about Syria. Let's take a look at some other key figures in this. And I'll just quickly uh, run this list down for you so you can see some of this. This guy right here on your screen happens to be none other than General Wesley Clark, the commander of the European and NATO from 1997 to the year 2000. Watch what he says here on your screen. About 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who used to work for me. One of the generals called me and he said, Sir, you've got to come and talk to me a second, he says. We've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on, on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq? Why? He said, I don't know. He said, I guess they don't know what else to do. He said, well, did they find some information connecting Sodom to Al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says... There's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's, it's, you know, we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments, he said. I guess if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. Then he goes on to say, so I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? He said, oh, it's worse than that. He reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office, today. He said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq, then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off with Iran. Looks like the government's been planning this for a while, yeah? Sounds like to me they'd like to have everybody around Israel really getting to where they hate the Jews even more so, as if they don't already. And how many times do you think that the Jewish people really support every action of Prime Minister Netanyahu? And I pray that Prime Minister Netanyahu is not part of this scheme, but you never know. Shimon Perez clearly was part of it. We'll go into that in a moment. So... Not only him, though. Take a look at Roland Dumas, former French minister for the foreign affairs. What did he have to say? Two years before the hostilities started in Syria, before the Arab Spring, I was in England. I met with English officials, and some of them, who are my friends, admitted England was preparing the invasion of Syria. 
They even asked me as a French foreign minister if I would like to participate in this. This operation was prepared, conceived and organized in the simple purpose of removing the Syrian government. It is important to know that the Syrian regime has anti-Israeli sentiments. The Israeli Prime Minister told me a while ago, we will try to get along with the neighboring states and those who don't get along, we will take them down. No, you're only going to put in a worse government than what you already have. And if that doesn't top it off, what about U.S. Senator Richard Black in his interview with Jeff Steinberg? He says, I've studied the Syrian war, the origins of the war for years, but when you go there and you shake hands with the soldiers and meet refugees, it turns black and white into technicolor. Syria is one of the most incredible, wonderful nations on earth, and the fact that Americans set out to topple the government and destroy it long before there was a faintest hint of civil unrest, it is really one of the greatest stains on the American honor. One, the, the one thing that stands out so vividly is the incredible religious tapestry of religious harmony between the, life, between the Christians, the Awadis, the Sunnis, the Shiites, Everyone there is such freedom of religion in Syria, and it is stunning. That's funny. You know, the Pope seems to be for that, but I guess not for the Syrians. In fact, today I was speaking with a, with a friend of mine on Skype who happens to be from Turkey. His family were, were Christians all the way back 1,700 years. But the Turkish government made sure that part of his family is not here today. Won't go into that. Anyway, why is there a war in Syria? We know that this was not a popular uprising. This was a calculated decision by the CIA, M6 French intelligence, working with the Muslim Brotherhood, Turks, Saudis, an organized plan to topple the government. And of course, we were familiar that there is competing plans for oil gas pipelines. It is true that the oil gas pipelines are a major, major incentive for this war. Syrians were quite insistent on that this is a Saudi Arabia's desire to impose Wahhabism. Their feeling is that their true zeal behind this is this desire to impose the harshest, most extreme and violent, brutal form of Islamic rule. My interpreter, he said, I was demonstrator against President Assad. We started holding demonstrations, but he said, First, people started showing up with Al-Qaeda flags. Then he said, people started showing up with military weapons. Now there is no second amendment in Syria, so you don't just grab a Kanashkov at the corner drugstore. In other words, you don't go buy these things. They have to be given to you, right? The third thing is they began to preach religious hatred. All along, the demonstrators would say, you guys get out here, get out here. This is not what we're about. We're just here asking the government for some changes, he said. My uncle was head of the demonstrators in the seventh month and back and forth with the Al-Qaeda people. They murdered him, they killed him. When we started the war in terror after 9-11, it was essentially a war against Al-Qaeda and similar organizations. We have gone full circle from opposing Al-Qaeda, which sent 3,000 Americans to a flaming death on 9-11. This is, by the way, this is uh, U.S. Senator Richard Black saying this. Complete circle to where we are now, supply them, we arm them, we finance them, and it's all coming with the approval of the highest authorities in the United States government. And as you saw right there, the Syrians were quite insistent that the Saudis desire to impose Wahhabism. What do you say also? They started showing up with military, oh, wait a minute, here we go. Demonstrate against President Assad. We started, let's see. Oh, okay, here it is right here. Um, their feelings is that the true zeal behind this is that the desire to impose the harshest, most extreme, and violent, brutal form of Islamic rule. That's what his interpreter said to him about this situation there. So, this is part of the New World Order. And what's weird is, as this guy here says, the Anglo-American Israeli Empire... Anglo-American Israeli Empire. You know, Americans are not for murdering and killing children. Americans and Israelis are not for New World Order. 
We know that by all the different things that are going on out there. But you know, there is a group that is. Here's another little article I thought was interesting as well. It says, why is the Syrian president relentless de demonized by the Anglo-American Axis? In other words, the New World Order, right? Just like President Vladimir Putin of Russia, Syria's President Bashar Hafez al-Assad has been the victim of relenting character assassinations and false reporting by the Western mainstream media, many of the MSM, you know, American Western ma mainstream media, uh, throughout the Anglo-American axis have published one false story after another in concerted effort to turn the entire world against him. And for what? He's a medical doctor. He married a British girl. She grew up in Britain. Her parents were from Syria, though. You know, th this man has not been an axis of evil as they perpetrated a mass. They've lied and brought more propaganda than you could ever imagine against him. And the man was trying to make peace with Prime Minister Netanyahu before the Arab Spring. And I know personally that the Arab Spring was started by the U.S. government. I know that because their own people told me that. And they said it worked there, but then they told me it did not work in Washington, D.C. at the mall when the other man burned himself alive. Unbelievable. Jeez. Let me just read something to you real quick, too, from Anton uh, Ch Ch Chotkin. And he had yellow ears. It says, but the British... Israel myth in a leap of logic. The Jews need to be put into Palestine to fulfill prophecy, get slaughtered in a war with the Muslims and bring about the end times. To provide fuel for this mythology, the royal family. Let me back up and read you the whole thing here. You need to know what this says here. These are just some little tidbits that I wanted to share with you. And this is why I'm against this new world order fantasy that this guy was speaking about. It says the British monarchy and its prime minister and foreign office fabricated British Israelism in the 19th century from early versions of the story. They claimed that Queen Victoria was descended from the biblical King David and was thus the descendant of the Davidic family tree that produced Jesus. They taught that the tribes of Israel wandered into Northern Europe and that by supposed genealogy, the British are the real chosen people and the British empire is thus God's empire. The modern Jews by this British account are not the historical Hebrews of the Old Testament Israel, but rather the British are. But says the British Israel myth, in a leap of logic, the Jews need to be put into Palestine to fulfill prophecy, get slaughtered in a war with the Muslims, and bring about the end times. To provide fuel for this mythology, the royal family asked the British Grand Lodge of Freemasonry to establish the Palestine Exploration Fund. Now, isn't it odd that they would do that? And let me kind of go on a little further with something that they said in this same article. It's, by the way, it's by William. This, the article was written by William Ramsey, but he was quoting uh, Anton uh, Chaitikin. But uh, William writes this here. The Jesuits are the great Zionists. Likely the British royals are working hand in hand with them. The British Israelism is a decoy to take our eyes off the real plot of relocating the Pope's chair to Jerusalem. That's political Zionism. This is the Rothschild's version of Zionism. And this is what I am against. I'm not against my own people. I'm not against my people when they were buying up the land in Israel back before the First World War. I'm not against my people that are in Israel today. Because truly God saw that the Jewish people would return to the homeland. Truly in Micah, he says that we would go home to Mount Zion and be there forevermore. But then God asks the question, why are you in travail as a woman in travail? Why are you in pain? Is there no king in you? No, Prime Minister Netanyahu will not work even though he was anointed as a king. King. Has thy counselor perished? Yes, 2,000 years ago he did. But God says that if he, he said, I bring this labor upon her, will I not bring her forth? He's going to deliver Israel by their two witnesses, but not just Israel that's living in Jerusalem, but he's going to wake up the Jews globally with these two witnesses. And no Jew will ever be for a new world order. And as it stated right there, they're bringing them there to slaughter them by the Muslims. No wonder why they got to conquer Syria. 
If you don't conquer Syria, it'll never work. And as I said, I am against what they're doing. As Barry Chalmish, the late Barry Chalmish, who I consider to be a friend, we had many discussions together privately as well as on air. And Barry says here in 1994, the newspaper Hadashot revealed a most remarkable secret of the Middle East peace process. A friend of Shimon Perez, the French intellectual Mark Halter, claimed in an interview that in May 1993, he delivered a letter from Perez to the Pope within Perez promised to internationalize Jerusalem granting the UN a political control over the old city of Jerusalem and the Vatican hegemony over the holy sites, uh, sites within. The UN would give the PLO a capital within its new territory, East Jerusalem, would become a kind of a free trade zone of world diplomacy. Halter's claim was backed by the Italian newspaper La Stampa, which added that Arafat was apprised of the agreement and it was included in the secret clauses and the declarations of principles signed in Washington in September 1993. And in 1995, the Israeli radio Arut Shiva was leaked a cable from the Israeli embassy in Rome to Perez foreign ministry in Jerusalem confirming the handover of Jerusalem to the Vatican. The cable later is disputed by Perez and he says not handed over is what it should have said. But as Perez, or excuse me, as Barry Chamish pointed out later is that uh, it was kind of funny though that he kept referring here, it says, illustrated the story political state of Israel's rabbis that accepted the cockamine excuse and re-invited re Perez to their tables because they had told him that he didn't want him at their uh, tables for dinner. He says, however, in a widely disputed minutes of the meetings with Clinton in 1997, Perez reiterated his diplomacy, ending with the words, as I had previously promised the Holy See. That's why they got an official seat there. That's why the Pope is fulfilling prophecy in Obadiah where it says, you shall drink upon my holy mountain and all the nations shall continually drink and they shall swallow down. You did your communion service there. We already know all about that. Now, the point is, when I get into all this here, let me, let me just share something else with you. Let me close this out for just a moment. Okay. This is what we have now. What you have on your screen now. This is, the lines have been redrawn. Now it's official with Google. This is copyrighted 2016. You, know, you won't be able to see it. It says right there, map data, copyright 2016, Google Maps. All right? Now, as I zoom in here for you, like I showed you the other day, okay, they have now cut Jerusalem in half. East Jerusalem now belongs to the West Bank, only except Hebrew University. The neighborhood I lived in right here is now belongs to the West Bank. And as I showed you the other day, if you go down, you go down Highway 1, now Highway 1 that comes up to Jerusalem is inside the West Bank. You get right there, you get, then you're going to come through to where you get to the Eco Bridge. That'll be the checkpoint once they get the United Nations forces all set up there the way they want them. Now, here's what's interesting though. You do this, all right, and then if you go to images, I begin to look for a map, uh, the West Bank map. Now you can see it better, broader on here. This is, this is more of a blown up, it's not showing the perfect details. But again, the West Bank right here, as you're seeing here, this is what Google has already changed it to, which crosses Highway 1. This, when I looked it up on the internet, this is actually the Oslo Accords that they signed that now they're starting to get ready to bring into to being here. The old lines, which would include Jerusalem where I lived at and stuff, is what we had been living under all of this time. So now that they have, now they have got Google on board with this, but then it also explains then why the, that uh, the recently at the, 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 what was it, the United Nations, they're no longer allowing the Temple Mount to be considered a Jewish site or belonging to Israel. And they're talking about only giving them one little tiny little wall space and saying this belongs to the Jewish people. They're setting it up, this new world order, along with the U.S. and certain Israeli leaders that are trying to bring about this new world order there, they're going to give that to the Pope of Rome. That's what they're going to do. They're going to build a third temple. Now they might let the Jews in there, who knows. But they'll probably only let the ones they want in there. And that's where the issue is going to come down at. Anyway, very serious thing that's going on, guys. Very serious. Uh, and by the way, quickly, some other news as well. Um, the, that I also want to bring to you, besides the downing of this helicopter here, uh, also, we have going on a uh, good friend of mine here on on here. Let me just quickly 
bring you up here to show you some things that are that are happening. Wait a minute, actually over here. Here we go. We have AWACSs in the air. Uh, they're in the air over over several places. They're in Europe. They've been seen over. Uh, uh, NATO, NATO is bringing them in. They, they were flying over Turkey today. They were flying over Armenia today. They're flying in Europe. They're pretty much staying in the air at all times now. But what's interesting, the AWACS plane is not designed to determine what the issues is on the ground. It's only for things that are happening in the air, whether it be missiles or Russian planes or Syrian planes. They're there to monitor to see what Russia is doing. But not only that, though, uh, as well, we have here, let me just, uh, uh, what we have right here on already happened, the AWACS born, uh, they were flying over Turkey and Romania, both here, and as well, Russia's uh, nuclear quick caliber NK-3M-14 nuclear capable cruise missiles uh, has left Sevastopol today. Um, that happened a couple of hours ago or at least was posted there. So tensions are definitely mounting there in the Middle East, and uh, especially the downing with this helicopter. If, if any of the NATO crew members were killed in this, then I am sure it's only going to escalate the tensions even uh, worse. Uh, it does state here, it's another article here, it says that uh, military uh, report five Ukrainian servicemen were killed in Donbass. I don't know if it was because of gunfire as of yet or the downing of the helicopter. Uh, I do know that they had uh, they had mercenaries that had 30 of them that tried to breach through uh, the the contact line there in Donbass. Uh, the the uh, the self-proclaimed republic there, they lost two of their people in the battle, but uh, claimed that they killed 15 of the men that were trying to bust through their lines there. Uh, they said it did catch them off guard. Anyway, tensions are very high, and uh, I know there is a diplomatic effort going on uh, to possibly bring another ceasefire, but from the looks of what we've seen today, uh, eventually somewhere along the way they're going to try to take Syria no matter what, uh, unless they decide that they will live with... Uh, uh, with uh, Bashar al-Assad in power, or if they can get Russia to agree for him to leave power, and then they'll put their own man in there, which again, uh, I think is in the long run, will be some kind of radical Islamic extremist who will eventually uh, cause the demise for, for Israel when they bring all the nations against Israel. Uh, right now, the uh, US is playing the ally to Israel. Uh, because there is a big game going on for this new world order. But ultimately, for the Jewish people, it's not in the interest of the Jewish people. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, also, uh, one other thing, let me mention this before I forget about it. I did have an uh, email conversation today with Channel 428 uh, about copying our videos and placing them uh, online. Uh, I know my wife did not realize, and I had forgotten myself, that about a year ago we had given uh, uh, the Channel 428 permission to post our videos online, and so uh, that, that was my mistake. I know there are several channels that do it. We've announced here recently uh, that, uh, you know, I wasn't so much opposed with it, so long as we didn't have titles that make it look like we were prophesying things, uh, because it does get the, the message out to more people. Uh, but uh, we had actually given them permission, and he brought that to my attention uh, first on, on one of the messages there, and then he sent it to me in an email as well. So I, I stand corrected on that. We had given them permission, and I apologize for that. Uh, and they also said that they would include uh, a way for people to contact us by putting in the description, uh, israelinewslive.org, our website, and as well... Um, uh, they would also ban comments on there so that that way people could communicate more directly with us. Now, the reason we did that was because there's just too many people that will post comments. I'm just not crazy about some of the things that they say. We like to kind of keep a little bit better control of that. So uh, at any rate, I wanted to correct that and, and let you know that, yes, we did give them permission and we've agreed upon how that that would be done so that it would protect us a little better and as well, we thank, uh, th are thankful that they are getting the message out to more people. Uh, 
and I appreciate that as well. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.